empowering your life with Brian E.J. Robinson uh, right here on Holy Hills Radio. Uh, I always say this, but I am excited for so many different things that are going on uh, within my life, within the life of uh, those around me. But honestly, before we get started, I really want to uh, talk about what God is doing right here uh, with Holy Hills Radio, the Holy Hills Network. I always say network uh, because I believe that God is going to open some doors for this uh, this institution to move not only into uh, from radio into television into to movies into media to print. You know, just have its footprint in every single thing because uh, this is a God ordained ministry uh, that is giving people the opportunity to express themselves and to teach and to preach and minister the word of God uh, who may not have the finances, who may not have the connection, who may not have what it, uh, what the world will believe it takes to get on what they say mainstream media is. But one of the things that I am so excited about is honestly that the definition of mainstream media, as you can hear, I just kind of hit my knee and hurt a little bit, but uh, mainstream media is changing. I think God is opening so many doors, whether it's social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Vine, what else is there? Uh, Tumblr, I think there is, and blogs, you're doing all these things. There are so many different platforms and so many different outlets out there for us to express ourselves, for us to, you know, speak to uh, what God has for us to do and to do it outside of what the world says we have to do. Um, and it's such a great era because we're able to reach people uh, who we wouldn't be able to reach before. I think about FM radio. One of my buddies was talking about this FM and AM radio. You know, if you're in the car, it's great. But if you're not in the car, how many of us are listening to uh, FM or AM radio? But the power of God right now to have internet broadcasting, uh, the TuneIn app, or to have YouTube, or all these different things to where people all around the world can tune in to a radio show, can tune in to a live worship service um, of the word being preached and taught. Uh, no matter where you are, you're able to uh, get that word and have the opportunity to preach and teach that word. That's miraculous to me. Um, but it's really the wave of the now. I wasn't even saying the future, it's the wave of now. So God is truly opening doors uh, in that area. And we just, we just I don't know if I want to, 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 to leak it now, are we allowed to leak it, studio engineer, about what we have coming? Uh, well, the thing, well, well, listen, he said, he said, yes, that's quick, yes. Well, the God is opening doors for Holy Hills Network because uh, a lot of you are listening and we're blessed to have, you know, uh, an African side and an, uh, an English division side, but we are now getting ready to uh, release two separate sides. So 24 hour uh, African, 24 hour English. Uh, so that is going to be awesome so that whether you're at work in the daytime, you're on the treadmill, you're working out, whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to be able to tune into Holy Hills and, uh, and hear uh, the gospel preached in English, songs in English, shows in English. And I'm excited uh, because we've been asking for it, they've been wanting it, and God has opened the door to do it. Uh, one of the things that I just want to speak to, not just for Holy Hills, but for just people in general, is God's timing is the best timing. Amen. I think so often we can have great ideas and we say, well, the Lord showed me this and the Lord showed me that. And I wrote this down. I really think it should be this way. But God is saying it should, it will be, but not right now. Uh, so I just want to speak to that because what I feel in my spirit is that as this transition is uh, transition is happening, there's so many things uh, that are also happening in the lives of the people who uh, are affiliated with Holy Hills but are also listening to Holy Hills. So it really is the divine timing of God that makes everything um, perfect, that makes everything right. And when you flow with the divine timing of God, what happens is he opens the door that literally no man can open. But also he's able to hold the enemy back and shut doors that really the enemy wants open. He can shut those things off, shut those demonic principles, those people um, off and get them out of your life. Uh, get them out of your arena, get them out of your area so that as God is blessing, you don't have anybody pulling on you. You don't have anybody putting negative thoughts, negative emotions, negative energy or atmosphere around you. And when that happens, listen, 
you're going to catapult to where God uh, really desires for you to go. Uh, but tonight is is a night that's not really regimented. I don't have a, a list of things to discuss. I don't have my times and everything. We got to take a break. We're free for you know, Holy Spirit move. Uh, and, and really, that, that's what I, that, that's been my prayer. That will always be my prayer for every single listener, for every single person uh, within the body of Christ, is that we allow for the Holy Spirit uh, to really just move and to lead us uh, and to guide us. Uh, I think so often we get tied down to uh, our, our program, our itinerary, our goals. Um, and now those things are not negative in, in themselves. It's great that we plan. You know what I'm saying? The Lord instructs us within the Bible to plan. But guess what? We submit those plans to God. We submit those plans to the Holy Spirit. And he as our divine escort. For those of you who don't know, I always say it, the Holy Spirit is our divine escort. Uh, he's endeavoring to take us places that he has been, not places that we have been ourselves, yes. but places that we could never think about, places that we could never imagine, uh, higher heights, deeper depths, mm -hmm. connections that will blow your mind. Um, but when we submit those plans to the Holy Spirit, what we are doing is we're being sensitive to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, and I always think about Daniel. When you look at the story of Daniel, it was very interesting. He prayed the prayer that he prayed, and, and God gave him an answer the same day that he prayed it. Yes. But what happened was that answer was delayed getting to him. Literally, the angel was trying to come to bring the answer, and he was held up by the princes of darkness. Mm -hmm. And they had to send Michael out there to take care of some business. And that's where we always get that 21 day fast from that yes. he had to wait for that period of time. But what that speaks to uh, in my life and in the life of and many others, and I would like to say is the timing uh, of God. So what happens is sometimes we pray for something and God instantly answers that prayer. There literally is no delay between our request and God's granting it. But what happens is there are circumstances and situations, there are principalities, there are rulers of darkness, there are all of these spiritual things that attempt to get in the way of that delivery. Uh, and the thing is, there. The, the, I love the story because the, the angel was bringing the message. So the angel was already en route. Yes. And so what I want to speak to people tonight is that if you pray to prayer, if you've made a request of the Lord, if you have been seeking God for something and that answer has not come yet, it has not manifested itself, don't get discouraged. Be patient. But trust while you're and trust God's timing, yes, indeed. Uh, and while you're being patient, you have to be joyful. You have to be prayerful. You have to be mindful that you serve a God who is not a man. He can't lie. And so when you make that request, especially when you use his word, you know, God, you said this, God, you said that he's not, he's not going to uh, hold that thing up, but there may be some issues within the spiritual realm. Uh, but the lovely thing about it is when one angel can't bring it, guess what? There's another that can come fight that battle. So no matter what comes our way, there is an angel, there is a spiritual answer to whatever problem I'm going through. So what does that say to me about my problem? That says that no matter what the problem is, if I am a believer of Jesus Christ, if I'm serving God, then there is a mechanism to solve the problem that I'm in. There's literally nothing new under the sun, right? If, if there's nothing new under the sun, then guess what? Everything that I could be going through, everything that's coming in my mind, that's coming in my life, somebody somewhere has dealt with it or they're currently dealing with it. And the word of God says he makes a way of escape for every single thing. So I know that was kind of a, 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 a diversion there, but that's just what I want to say to people is God's timing is amazing. And, and when you really embrace God's timing, your life, your faith, your, your, your strength, your drive, your determination, all of those things will flow. Um, and before I get into the show, which I'm already in, I just want to open up <laughs> with prayer. We always want to make sure that we go to the throne of grace because prayer uh, is something that is essential to the life of the believer. Uh, the word of God tells us that the power that we desire, that empowerment only comes by prayer and fasting. So let's go ahead and go to the throne of grace. Father God, we come before you right now. 
Lord God, we're not in any kind of rush, Father. We are just literally uh, on your divine timing. We're basking in your glory, Father. You've allowed for us to make it through this entire day, Lord God. And right now, right now, right now, we are going to begin to give you praise and give you honor. Some of us may not have done it all day long, but we're going to take a moment to stop right now, wherever we are, to lift up our voice right now and just begin to proclaim your goodness. Father, you are great God. You are a great God. There's nothing that you cannot do, Lord God. We know right now that you are the supreme being, that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are my all in all. You are the great I am. And with that knowledge, Lord God, we know that we would be nothing without you, Father. So we're just giving you glory and honor right now for waking us up this morning, for allowing us to move throughout the day safely, Father. We know right now that it was for a purpose, Lord God. Now, on tonight, we would ask that as I'm speaking, Lord God, as, as, as Minister Fluala is speaking, Father, that the words that are coming out of our mouths, Lord God, would be acceptable in your sight, Lord God, that they would be on time, that they would be in season, Father, that they wouldn't just be here to fill time, Lord God, but that every single word that came out of our mouth would be the living word of God. Father, we thank you right now for what you're getting ready to do for our listeners, Lord God. We thank you right now for what you're getting ready to do for Holy Hills, Father, for every single show that is on this uh, uh, radio station, Lord God, and for their host, Father. We know right now that you are in the blessing business, Father, and you're going to begin to blessed like never before, Lord God. We ask right now that every single listener, whatever issue it is in their lives, we stand right now in agreement with it, that we serve a God who is bigger than our issues. We serve a God that is bigger than our circumstances. We serve a God that is bigger than every single demon that attempts to come at us. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every single person right now. We speak, hallelujah, divine miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask right now, Lord God, that whatever issues our listeners are going through, that you begin to shake them, Father God, that you put your hands on them and you shake them right now, Father God. Wake them up. Allow for them to surrender to you, Lord God. We know that when we surrender all to you, Father, we'll never be the same. When we let everything go, you're able to come Come in and to fix us, Lord God. So just allow tonight, Father, for lives to be changed, Father. Allow for souls to be saved. Allow for those who are going the wrong way to stop in their place and to turn back around, Father. We thank you right now for what you're going to do on tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, <laughs> there's so many things that I uh, would love to talk about. Uh, I believe when I called you earlier, Minister Flew Allen, we discussed uh, just talking about goals and goal setting and, and just achieving the things uh, that God would want us to do. Uh, and as I was thinking about achieving goals, I honestly thought about two components of what stops us from achieving those goals. Uh, there was a spiritual aspect and then there was a physical. Um, now, the reality is they both have something to do with each other, but we have to address them a little bit differently. Uh, and as I was thinking about that, I couldn't help but uh, listen. The news was on. Uh, I forget what station I was listening to, but I kept hearing all of these negative things about all the stuff that was going on in the world. And I just kept getting this fearful sense of communication, that every single time I listen to the news, they're pushing fear. Every single time I turn on the radio, they're pushing fear. And I began to just really think about what fear was and how fear grips our life and how fear also can block us from mm -hmm. achieving our goals. So tonight, I just kind of wanted to open up and speak a little bit about some of the things that are going on uh, within our country uh, some of the things that are going on uh, overseas, and then wrap that around the word of God on tonight, um, because the world is chaotic. I mean, the world is dark. 
And we've known that. It's nothing new. <laughs> it may get worse, as the older generation always tells me. Well, I, I, I didn't have to deal with what y'all are dealing with, but you know, it was still bad back in their time. The word of God says it is going to get worse. Yeah, so it, we already know. Yeah, the word of God does tell us that it's going to get worse. So we're 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 clear about that. But the beautiful thing about that is guess what? If we're believers, we win in the end. I mean, we literally win in the end. The book is already written. Yes. So yeah, there's some there's some time in between it, but at the end of the day, we know that we win. Come on. I play a game a little bit different when I know I'm gonna win. If I'm playing basketball and I know I have no option of losing, I know the end of this game is gonna be win. Oh, I'm, I'm playing different. I'm going hard. I ain't no need for slack, no doubt, no fear, no nothing. Um, but the world is designed to push fear on us. Uh, the world is designed to to put hate in us. Uh, it's it's everything that God is. The world is anti that. So if God says you're to love your neighbor, the world will try to get you to hate your neighbor. If God says that we should have no fear, the world tries to get us to fear. If God says there's to be unity, the world wants there to be division. Uh, well, that's a whole nother sermon <laughs> on itself. <laughs> but you know, the, the, and that's the way of the enemy. The enemy, if you look at Satan and his original intent, he divided. Yeah. That's what he did. He literally said, you know what? I want to be like God. I think I'm like God. I'm gifted. Let me take about one third of what you got up here, Jesus. Or God, Jesus. Name, you know. But uh, <laughs> we're not going to get into the Trinity debate tonight. But yeah, so I'm going to take. What, what you have, and he's been about division from the very beginning. The Bible calls him the, the father, calls him the father of lies. That means you, you the daddy of lies. That means you just around here creating lies and lies and lies and lies, and then those lies are populating more lies and more lies. Uh, but with that being said, if the enemy's lying, then we should be what telling, telling the, the truth. truth, which is hard sometimes. But the Lord will work with us all. <laughs> but the thing that uh, I kept seeing was fear, uh, domestic terrorism. Uh, we had an event that happened, I believe it was last week, uh, yeah, last week to where something that I've never seen in my lifetime, I've only been here 23 years, but a woman was literally beheaded on U.S. soil. That's something that we hear about all around the world, but I've never heard it happen in our own territory. Now, on top of that, there is religious persecution from all areas, whether from the court, whether it be from homosexual and lesbian, transgender organizations. There's religious intolerance. Um, there's a pastor right now who is, I believe he's in Iran, um, and he's been in Iran for uh, almost two years, I believe now. Uh, he was jailed. He's a pastor that was jailed. And he has an eight-year sentence for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's still there. Religious persecution that's happening all around the world. I actually was on Facebook yesterday and, and saw uh, a, a Caucasian preacher who was preaching a sermon against interracial marriage. He was saying he doesn't believe it. It's against the Bible. Um, this same pastor is one who persecutes and, and, and really just teaches hate in a lot of different areas. And that's in the church. Yes. So not only are we receiving persecution outside of the church, but even within some churches, there's persecution as well. And none of this is in the original design of God. Now, then on top of all of that, there's disease. You know, we've been, we, we understand Ebola. We understand that it's been in other countries and it's 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 wreaking havoc and America's done things. People have sent money. We're trying to find solutions and, and cures and help. But now, it's made its way to America. So for those of us who are used to being in comfortability like we are, we are, we're used to just sitting back, relaxing. We now have so many different things that is causing fear. And those things can cause so much fear that we begin to Satan, can I say it again? I was gonna say it breaks your spiritual man. It breaks your spiritual man. <clears throat> and what before we talk about our goal setting. Whenever something is breaking your spiritual man down, what do you have to do? And one of the things that I really want to address tonight about fear, uh, it comes from a scripture that I love, Psalms 91. I, I remember, I don't know if he told me this or did you tell me this, but Grandpa used to always say, uh, leave Psalm 91 open in your house. You know, just somewhere in your house, set it open. And I remember getting my first apartment. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was a little scared to be there alone, you know. And I opened Psalms 91. I read through it one time. I read through it two times. I fell asleep reading it. And that ever since that day at that apartment, I never had an issue, never had any kind of fear. Uh, and, I, and I laughed. Dr. David C. Ford Jr. of Columbus Christian Center was ministering on this last night. And he said, Psalms 91.1. And I never thought about it. He said, 911. Emergency. <laughs> he said, this is the song that you go to whenever you have an emergency. And fear is an emergency. Uh, persecution is an emergency. Sickness is an emergency because guess what? Our Bible says that if we are believers in Jesus Christ, that by Jesus Christ's stripes, we're healed. Amen. So guess what? We have no fear of sickness. sickness. That's right. Uh, uh, Jesus, he left and he sent us a comforter. We have angels who are protecting us. We have a Holy Spirit who's leading us and guiding us. So guess what? We shouldn't be fearful of any persecution. Right. Even though we know the church is going to be persecuted, we see it in our Bible. Apostles were killed. Christians were killed. They were martyred. But guess what? They're still protected because when they died, they went to be with Jesus. So at the end of the day, we are protected in every area. So the fear that we are feeling is literally false evidence appearing real. It's not real. It is literally the enemy's tactic to make us believe and start acting upon something that's not even real. So this Psalm, Psalm 91, is very imperative uh, uh, to fear. And, and what we're going to say about setting goals on tonight is that when you're beginning to set goals, the first thing that you have to do when you set that goal is to get rid of your fear. There is literally no way to walk forward and to move forward in God if you're fearful. Uh, but Psalms 91 reads as follows. It says, he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the Almighty. Wait a minute. Hold up. Pause. That first verse begins to speak to us about our security. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. So if I'm constantly being in prayer, I'm constantly being shielded by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, guess what? He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him, him will I trust. In him. And who is the him? Tell, tell, tell me who the him is. <laughs> well... Almighty. No, okay, okay, okay. I was gonna the say Almighty it. <laughs> What's his name? Jesus. Okay, I just I had listen, I just had to say his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Um, Sometimes that's all you can say is you're Jesus, right about Jesus, that. Jesus, Jesus. You are hundred percent right he about has that. has a lot of power. <laughs> but he says, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. We have to, in this day and age, trust in Jesus Christ, trust in the Holy Spirit, trust in our God like never before. Uh, I, I look to the apostles. We've been, as a church, we've been reading through the Acts of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. I always joke and say, really, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Um, we've been reading through those. And one of the things that we see in Acts is there was fearlessness. Yeah. The apostles, the new believers, the converts were literally fearless. They said, I have experienced Jesus. I've experienced his Holy Spirit. I've experienced his love, his power. I was going to say, and not only that, they were ready to move forward, not knowing what was going to come up against them, if they were going to lose their life, if they were, like you said, going to be persecuted, or if they were not going to be received, they still were willing to go all out, no matter what the outcome is going to be. It's the trust. Mm -hmm. And it's the trust that I always tell people, the best way to trust somebody is to have an experience with them. That's right. Uh, now, I can know somebody and think highly of that person, but not trust them. But if I have a personal experience with a person and I know their character, I know what I've seen them do, I know how they've come through for me before, I'm never going to doubt that trust because I have personal relation. That's the same yeah. thing with Jesus Christ. When you continue to build the personal relationship and you let him be God in your life, you let him be your king of kings and lord of lords, you have no option but to trust because you see what he can do. Yeah. You see what he's done. You see what he will do. And for those of you who are not necessarily uh, Bible-toting Christian believers, you might be new to the faith. You might be just listening because I invited you to listen. Thank you so much. <laughs> but the thing is, if you are new to Christ and you may not have any uh, experiences that you've trusted, open up your Bible. Yeah. Read about David. Read about Samson. Read about, uh, read about Elijah. Elisha. Read about Jesus, read about the apostles, and you literally begin to see how 
a protective God is of his people. If you look at the story of the Israelites, Moses, and getting them up out of Egypt, come on now. If that's not a God that I can trust, I don't know where I'm going to be. Whole bunch. He did a whole bunch, and he's still doing it. Yeah, he's still doing it. We, we Israel's a whole nother discussion, but Israel is. If you can't see in my my hand on if you're on the radio, but on the t on the uh, YouTube you can see is this big. They're not big at all, but still they are more powerful than many nations that are three, four, 20 times their size. They're targeted by all the major uh, 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 non-Christian countries yet and still god protects them and covers them and increases them so that they can still do what he's called them to do and he they, yeah that's the thing they're his chosen people and we are believers in jesus christ so the covenant they have we have a better covenant Amen. come on now Amen. if you look at them and god blesses the israel even to this day he blesses his children if we are New Testament believers, we believe in Jesus Christ, we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we know what he did on the cross, we know what he's going to do when he comes back, guess what? He gave us a better covenant. So I'm just saying, for those of you who have a little doubt, look at Israel and believe that you have something better than what they have, you can't walk, it changed your walk. You walk with a little bit more swag in your step. Like, hey, look, look, if you did this for them back in the, back in the Old Testament, we, we, we in the New New Testament here. Come on, Jesus, you got to do something for me. And he surely will. Uh, but the, 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 the psalm goes on to say even more so. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and, by the, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We talked about how the enemy wants to switch things. The word of God says that his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. The world likes to deal in what? That which is false, lies. Uh, even believers, we get caught up in it. Even believers, we are so, because uh, we're human, we're deceived. We lie, we cheat, we deceive, we cover it up, we do all these different things. But literally what God is telling us, he says, let me wrap my arms. Let me wrap my arms around you. Let my angels cover you. Let me protect you from this world. The word is let, though. He yeah. won't force himself on anybody. Yeah, he, he's a perfect gentleman. All the time. I, that's what the old folks say. The Holy Spirit's a perfect gentleman. You know, he won't make you do anything you don't want to. And that's true. He will literally not make you do anything that you don't want to. But when you say, God, let, I want you to come in to protect me. I am believing right now that you, my everything. He wraps his arms around you. And then the thing about it is the truth shall be your shield and buckler. The thing that I want to tell every single person is that when you are literally going through rough times, when you're going through fear, when you're going through doubt, when you're going through depression, you need to find the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is the word of God. The truth is the 66 books and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The 66 books are great, but without the Holy Spirit, come on, you're missing something. But when that Holy Spirit is encompassed in all of this, the truth, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then it says, when you get that truth, it's your shield and your buckler. That means I'm protected with the truth. I'm protected with the word of God. So even when that false evidence that is appearing real comes my way, I throw the truth at it. It has to flee. What I, I'm telling you, literally, I, I've heard stories of people who have been in tough situations. Uh, uh, Dr. Forbes tells the story of Apostle Thompson uh, being down in Louisiana. And, and, and uh, a, man of, um, a minister was preaching a sermon, and, and, he, and it was a funeral, I think it was. And the man says, you know, well, God took him on home. And an apostle got up there afterwards and said, well, that man's lying. Because God didn't take anybody home, you know what I'm saying, currently. He says, you know, at the end of the day, death is what will be defeated. So God's not killing anybody. Okay, especially not his child. And so the thing about it, the preacher called Apostle Thompson that night, and you know, they're down in Darrow, Louisiana. You know, they got that hoodoo and voodoo and all that stuff down there. And he called him, he says, hey, you don't know who you're messing with. I'm going to put a root on you, this, that, and that. Apostle, and he says, he starts spitting the truth. 
literally. And that is exactly what we have to do when fear begins to come in, whether that fear is a spirit or whether that fear is a person and, uh, and, and the spirit is working through that person. What we have to do is realize the gifts that God has given us, and we come back with that truth. The thing is, I know that tongues has power. That's the truth. So when something comes my way, guess what I'm going to do? And guess what? The enemy is going to flee. That's right. The enemy's going to run away. That's and right. then the thing about it is there's an opportunity. He might get saved. Mm -hmm. You keep on speaking in tongues because the thing about tongues is it's sacrificial. You really don't know holistically what you're saying, but you're communing directly with God. The enemy can't interpret that. He can't get in the way. So you begin to spit that tongue at somebody and you may speak to the very devil inside of them or the very issue inside of them and that thing will flee and then they'll come to their clarity and you can preach Jesus to them. You can talk to them and you can take them somewhere they've never been. Yeah. But guess what happens? A lot of times I'm, I'm responsible too. When the enemy comes at us, we back up. When the devil comes at us, we go, oh, well, I guess it wasn't meant for me. What did God say? Oh, well, uh, I guess I'm not going to go there. You know, I really wanted to preach Jesus to that person. But, you know, they said this and they said that. If God told you to preach it, you better do it. Literally, one of the things that I constantly tell people is, listen, you cannot dwell in fear and faith at the same time. It is literally impossible to dwell in fear and faith at the same time. Uh, the, the, the analogy that I always use, uh, and, 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 and Pastor Creflo Dollar did this, and he says, listen, he says, I want you right now. I said, begin to think in your mind and, and say your ABCs in your mind. So come on, let's do it with me. Say your ABCs in your mind. You doing it? Mm -hmm. Okay, ABCs in your mind. Now with your mouth, count, count to 10. Your mind stopped counting the ABCs, didn't they? So that is the same exact thing in the spiritual realm. When you have fear coming in and you cut it off with faith, fear has to stop. Fear literally is gone the minute you begin to meditate on faith. If something in your mind is saying, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I can't do it, I don't have this, I don't have that, my faith is I'm smart. I'm strong. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Guess what? Fear is gone. It's no longer playing in my mind. And when you begin to condition yourself that every time something negative comes in, you throw a positive there, eventually negative is going to stop coming. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm a witness. <laughs> Well, I'm getting excited here, and the Holy Spirit is really just doing his thing on tonight. Uh, I always, I say that every single week. I know I say it every single week, but I believe it to be true. Uh, every time we come in here, the Holy Spirit really just says what he wants to be said. But we're going to open the phone lines up on tonight if there's anyone who desired to call in. Uh, the phone number is 614 577 one four three four again that's six one four five seven seven one four three four in that text uh, if you want to text in uh, a lot of people want to text text in six one four three seven seven four five nine two again that's six one four three seven seven four five nine two uh and at this moment while you guys are texting or calling if you like to we're going to go ahead and take a a quick uh, commercial break a moment to just recoup you grab something to drink grab a bite to eat and we'll be back momentarily
Brian E.J. Robinson. I'm in studio on tonight with Minister Sharlanda Fruit Allen. We are discussing what well, I guess I'm talking more than she is tonight, <laughs> uh, but we have been discussing as the Holy Spirit is leading us, uh, just discussing fear a little bit and how, you know, fear is really not of God, how it's false evidence appearing real, and that we really in this day and age, with all of the chaos that's going around, with all of the propaganda and media uh, and things that are going on, it's easy to succumb to fear, but yes. we have to cast that fear out. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that perfect love cast out all fear. Jesus is perfect love. So once we embrace him, there is no fear in our life. But the whole purpose of discussing fear tonight was to intro us into uh, goal setting and really fulfilling the mission and call that God has on your life. Uh, this is something that we're going to kind of intro tonight. It won't be a series, but we have Pastor Everton Harris, who will be on uh, October the 22nd, I believe. I think that's the date. Don't don't quote me. I might be wrong. But he'll be discussing in depth about, you know, how to achieve those goals, especially with the opposition that comes from spiritual and physical. So uh, let's go ahead and intro into that. We've talked about fear and we've talked about moving out of fear. But once we move out of fear, where do we have to go? To faith. Uh, and faith is, what is faith? Um, <laughs> believing in the things that you cannot see. I mean, that is the totality of faith. It literally is believing uh, that which you cannot see. Uh, and one of the things that I, I, I've learned is that faith is, is really imperative. Apostle Leroy Thompson, who many of you know is the, the, the shepherd over uh, our pastor, Pastor uh, Dr. David C. Forbes Jr. of Columbus Christian Center, and, and me as well, uh, but he has been teaching on the glory, the glory of God. Um, and one of the things that he discusses is that we have to move from faith to anointing, and then you're able to experience the glory. Uh, so faith really is believing what you cannot see, and faith is something that opens the door to every single thing that God has for you. Uh, we we have to believe that which we cannot see because we believe in a God that we cannot see, but yes. He still is real. Yes. You know, we serve a really big God who can accomplish the impossible. Uh, I'll use Jesse Duplantis for example. I love what he always says. He says, "You know what? I believe the unbelievable, and I receive the impossible. I achieve the impossible." Yeah. That is literally what faith is. Mm -hmm. I am believing the most drastic things that are in accordance with the word of God. We always have to cover everything with the word of God. Uh, if, it, if, it, if it's against the word of God, you might want to check it. <laughs> but with that being said, that we move out of fear and move into faith. We're believing that which we cannot see. Why? Because we serve a big God, and that big God can accomplish anything, the impossible. I was going to say, I think a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to think big. We want to think, you know, just basic based upon what we've seen and what we've experienced in our life. And I think it stagnates us and it hinders us from thinking bigger. It's kind of like when you um, you live at a certain level, you know, mm -hmm. you know what your income is going to be. You know how many hours you're going to work. So when you're going out, you're looking for an apartment or you're going out looking for furniture or you're going out, you're you're thinking within the parameters of what your paycheck is mm -hmm. instead of looking that there may be increase, which yeah. allows you to have more. Hallelujah, increase. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you, you say we're increasing. No, we'll no, no. yeah, I know, I know. I mean, but if we serve this great big God who is all powerful and can do all things, why would we want to have faith? That's just really that, small. Yeah. I mean, you have to open up your mind and your spirit to really just believe and see. Even if you look at, uh, and what I have to always do, I look at the simple things. I'm looking at this microphone right now, and I am literally understanding that somebody had faith when they created this microphone. This was something in their mind. Could have been a vision that God gave, but it, it wasn't there. They didn't just wake up one day and the microphone sitting in front of them. No, they had to just, just start thinking and drawing and, and learning how things worked and, and how to connect the pieces and weld them together and how to put a light. There were different aspects of that, and it took faith. They believed what they couldn't see. And if you're ever going to accomplish something in your life, if you're going to fulfill what God has called you to do, you are going to have to believe what you cannot see. Because guess what? If you could see it, everybody would do it. If we could see the next thing all the time, everybody would be where God wants them to be. Mm -hmm. 
Literally, we would be right there because we can see it. But when you embrace what you can't see and you believe in the God who has done it over and over and over again, it truly opens your door and opens your life to something, uh, to me, that is miraculous, some, some, some passion, some drive that you've really never uh, uh, be seen before. You know, we believe, you know, that God goes with us. Mm -hmm. That our faith says that God is journeying with us in the in the form of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He's left the Holy Spirit with us, and that Holy Spirit is moving us and driving us and pushing us to where He wants us to be. But once we get a hold of faith, uh, because there are some people saying, "Listen, I got faith. I'm I got faith every single day. I'm working it out." So after faith, what would be the next step? Aligning yourself with God's word and his perfect will for your life. And this perfectly goes back with our scripture in Psalms 91, which talks about the truth being our shield and buckler. Mm -hmm. So if you understand that you already moved out of fear, fear is gone. I'm done. Get out of my life, fear, right? Now I've embraced faith. When there's faith, there can be no fear. It's literally a law. You got to cancel it out. You can't have faith and fear at the same time. So I have my faith. And then after I'm believing what I can't see, I'm going to move into the alignment with God's word and his will for my life. And the word is that truth. And once I move into that word, what happens in my life is that the word begins to manifest in my life. What do we always say? What you put in you always comes out. It's true in the physical. When we eat food, what we put in us is going to have to come out. It's also true in the spiritual. We have to learn, especially those of you who are listening who may be new to Christ, you have to understand and learn that a lot of the things that we see in the physical are mirrored in the spiritual. And if you can grasp that concept, then you begin to treat yourself in your spiritual walk a little bit different. What am I reading? What am I talking? What am I taking in? Who am I letting pour into me? Because somehow, some way, it's going to come out. And I was going to say that um, through going into the Word, it kind of, it it really reveals who you really are. A lot of times we think that we know who we are, but it's through the Word that we really learn who we are, whose we are, and then that'll activate us and it'll strengthen us in our faith so that we can move forward, so that we can be aligned, so that we can, well, you got to receive the revelation first, and then you can be aligned through the word with what that revelation was. And then that'll help you move from, that actually, it, it'll, it won't give room for fear to set in, but you have to stay in that word, because once you start lacking or, you, you know, you back off, in your word and in your study, your prayer time meditation, you'll see the change and you'll see where, when the news comes on or when somebody brings you a report, mm. then you, you start to move away from what the word has told you and you get caught up in what the word is, what the world is showing you. But we know the God that we serve and we know how he moves. We know what his actions are. We know what his thoughts are. We know what his feelings are for us. So anything that's negative, whether it's uh, depression, illness, uh, sick illness and sickness are the same thing. Poverty, lack, those things are not of God. Mm -hmm. right. So if we focus in that, then we'll constantly and continuously stay in alignment with God. You're hundred percent right. You know what you're focusing on, what you're thinking on, really does affect your life. And it, affects it, what comes out of you. It so. either propels you or stagnates you. And that is a hundred percent true. Well, the hour has flown by. What? Uh, yes, indeed, it is nine fifty-one. We didn't even get. <laughs> uh, you know, no, we we didn't get to everything that we uh, wanted to discuss. But th let me. I, this is. I'm going to talk about how awesome God is and how the Holy Spirit honestly flows. Um, you know, I, I literally have a binder of uh, 50 some weeks of series, you know, that are possible. You know, God wants you to plan. God wants you to get you different right things. Um, but then he'll give you right now words. So what God wants you to do sometimes is sit down, take the time to plan, take the time to research, take the time to study, but take the time ready. to learn, but be ready for yes. him to move you Thank at you. the drop of a dime. Sometimes we just think that uh, the Holy Spirit moving gives us a reason to be unprepared. You know, that's oh, never it. Uh, we're always supposed to be prepared and, and be in season, be ready to teach, be ready to preach. But sometimes he'll shift you and begin to manifest the things that you're focused on, the things that you're practicing, the things that you're implementing, because they're fresh to you. Uh, so with that being said, we started this uh, uh, topic today, but God has blessed us because we'll be able to continue this topic on next week. So we talked about fear. 
and how you have to move from fear and to get into faith. And once you get into faith, you then have to put yourself in alignment with God's word and God's will. And those are three things, three great things that honestly uh, could take months to get, could take months to really grasp. So let's pause, take a moment, and this next week, let's work on those three things. Let's work on acknowledging fear, understanding fear, and experiencing, you know, pointing out where am I, is this fear? God, God, God is this fear and let him reveal to you if it is and then show you how to get rid of that fear. And then after you get rid of that fear, let's work on walking in the faith. Practice that faith. And then once you grow in that faith, then the next step is bringing yourself into alignment with God's word and then God's will. And those three things to me are powerful steps to uh, achieving your goals and setting you on the path that God would have for you. Um, so is there anything else that you want to say on tonight, Minister Kuala? I just want to say um, that God is good, and I just thank him for the opportunity that we can come across the airwaves and bring to you what he has uh, for you. The things that we discuss on here, I believe that God allows us to minister unto you guys because they in some shape, form, or fashion actually apply to us in our daily lives. And I'm just thankful that we've been made allowed to be transparent and, and nobody said anything negative. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the transparency across the airwaves is allowing us all to mm -hmm. grow. It's mm -hmm. allowing us to move forward. It's allowing us to have a quickening in our spirit to do something that we've never done before. So as we're talking about moving from fear to faith and alignment, all of that will allow us to apply everything that God has said in his word to our everyday life so that we can bring our hopes, dreams, and aspirations to fulfillment or to amen. manifestation, so. Amen and amen. Transparency is key. I mean, I really am learning that in everything that I do in life. Uh, transparency really is key because so many people are also dealing with the same exact things. You know, we get in church and we preach great sermons, we have great suits and great outfits and cars, houses, all these things. But I want to know what's shout. really going on. You know, that's the thing. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you want to know what's really going on because I guarantee you if I'm suffering from it, there's some like 20, 30 other people um, who are suffering, but we're all afraid to discuss it. We're all afraid to talk about it. But you know, I, I'm a true believer in you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and i think um, that's one of the adversary's deception mechanisms too to make us think that it's not okay to share our experiences or share what we're going through on a day-to-day -day basis amen. and because ultimately if you keep it bottled up inside you're going to eventually kill yourself i mean you only take so much in before you have to put it out you're right what's in you will come out of you <laughs> well tonight has been um an awesome night for me. I have so many great points that I've picked up. And, you know, we have the three things that I want you to focus on this week is getting rid of fear, uh, embracing faith, and then moving into alignment with God's word and God's will. Uh, this will be up in a blog tomorrow morning. So these things will be there for you to take a look at. And it's going to be a quick blog. Uh, like I tell you, a lot of us are busy. We're looking at it while we're at work or while we're in our cars or, you know, doing something else. So I'm not going to give you five paragraphs to read. I'm going to put these points on there. I'm going to link some other things. We're talking about goal setting. So what I want to include are our SMART goals. So uh, SMART is an acronym for something that you can do to achieve certain goals. So that'll be up there for you as well. Uh, as for a downloadable sheet, you can download download that and then put that up on your wall, put that in your binder and just begin to move into some smart goals because as a, as a ministry, as a radio broadcast, we're talking about empowering your life. Uh, and when you are trying to empower your life, there are goals you got to set. There's things you have to check off the list and you have to begin to move forward. And sometimes, you know, you just got to do it. And I was going to add to that as you're printing off this list of things, Print off two, three, four copies and place them in different places that you know that you're going to come across or step into so that you have a constant reminder Amen. of these things. Amen. All right. Well, before we uh, close out tonight, I just want to um, just say that I love every single one of you, um, that God is a faithful God. Yes, he is. As as chaotic, as messed up as we are, as 
wishy-washy as we are, as confused as we are, God never takes his love away from us. Uh, he never takes his hand off of us. And I just want to make sure that every single listener knows that no matter how many times you mess up, no matter how many times you do something wrong, God, God still waiting. loves you. God is still waiting. And there literally is nothing that you can do that God cannot take and make it into a testimony. There's nothing that you can do that God can't take and turn it around and work it for the good, for his glory. Um, a lot of times we don't understand it. We're saying, God, I don't get it. This doesn't glorify you, but he says, no, at the end of this thing, at the end of your journey, at the end of your struggle, I have to get the glory because when you walk into what you're going to walk into, they're going to look at you and say it was nothing but the hand of God on your life that allowed for that thing to happen. So as we go through the week, I'm praying that God allows for every one of us to be transparent, to be open, and that he puts somebody in our lives, that he puts someone around you who you can talk to, yes. who you can be real with, who you can express yourself to, and who God can speak to you through them. Mm -hmm. So God is going to just, God, God's going to blow your mind this week. I want you to believe it. I really want you to meditate on that thing. And I want you to expect that God is going to bless your life. God is going to blow your mind. And God is going to do some supernatural things uh, like never before on this week. Father God, we thank you right now for this radio broadcast. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you right now for Holy Hill. We praise you for every single listener, Father. And we just are standing right now in all of what you've done on tonight for the word that has come forth. We know that it was a rainbow word, that it was on time, and that it was in it's none of us but all of you, Father. We ask right now that you would put your hedge of protection around every single listener right now, Father, and camp around them. Touch their mind, touch their heart, touch their spirit, Lord God. Allow for every unclean thing to leave them right now, Father. We praise you, we honor you. We ask right now that you would just bless uh, beyond our wildest imaginations until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You've been tuning in to Empowering Your Life with Brian E.J. Robinson right here on Holy Hills Radio, where we are empowering a generation one life at a time <laughs>